We have seen how to integrate one-form fields over paths, over one-dimensional regions. Our next question is, can we integrate two-form fields? How and over what? Let's think about the simple case of working in the plane. Let's say D is a nice region in the XY plane, and we consider a two-form field over D. What would it mean to integrate such a thing? Well, such a two-form field is of the form f of xy dx wedge dy. It's based on that basis two-form dx wedge dy. What would it mean to compute this integral? Well, there's really only one reasonable thing that we could do. If we think about that basis two-form dx wedge dy, that is area. In the plane, it is reminiscent of an area form. So let's take that scalar field, f, out in front and integrate that with respect to area over this domain, d, using the, the standard double integral for that. Now, there are some subtleties here, because recall, we now know that dy wedge dx and dx wedge dy are really related by a minus sign using that anti-commutativity. That means that we're really looking at oriented area in the plane. So a two-form in the plane is really a weighted oriented area form, and that's something that we can integrate using a standard double integral. Is this really going to help us out with anything? Yes, it is. It's going to simplify a lot of things and generalize greatly. Let's look at one example where this language of integrating a two-form field in the plane really makes a difference. And this is in the context of Green's theorem. Remember Green's theorem in the most general case, the integral of pdx plus qdy over the boundary of some planar domain d is really the double integral of partial q partial x minus partial p partial y with respect to area. Now students struggle with how to remember that. Why is there that minus sign? Why is it in front of the, the, the p term? Why isn't there a partial q partial y? All these questions Questions. Well, let's think using the language that we now know. Let's rewrite that one form, pdx plus qdy, as alpha. Consider what happens when you take the derivative of this one form field. You get what? Well, I get, uh, let's see, partial p, partial x, dx, wedge dx. Oh, wait, dx wedge dx is zero. The only term that survives is partial p, partial y, dy wedge dx. And likewise, with the second term, the only thing that survives when taking a derivative is partial q partial x dx wedge dy. And that means using the fact that dy wedge dx is minus dx wedge dy, we can combine the terms in this two form d alpha together. And we get a, a forms version of Green's theorem that says that the integral of a one form field alpha over the boundary of a domain D in the plane is really the integral of its derivative two form field D alpha over the interior using this definition that we have of the integral of a two-form field over a region in the plane in terms of the double integral with respect to area. Now that we know about how to differentiate forms, now that we know about the wedge product and its anti-commutativity, this is really clear. This simplifies the complicated notation of Green's theorem into a much more elegant equation. You might find this helpful for remembering Green's theorem. We're definitely going to find it helpful for interpreting it and its generalizations.